What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do the next problem, which is ternary XOR, which is actually a misnomer because the solution doesn't use XOR at all. But whatever, we're going to do this problem. So a number is ternary if it contains only digits 0, 1, and 2. So for example, the digits 1, 0, 2, 2, 1022, 11, 21, 2002. And the reason this is because they all contain that only the digits 0, 1, and 2. So you're given a long number x, a long ternary number x, and then you know that the leftmost digit is going to be 2. And the rest of the digits are going to be 0, 1, or 2. We'll define the XOR operation of a and b as c is equal to ax or b of length m, where c of i is equal to a of i plus b of i mod 3. So that what they're doing is they're going to take the digits, add the digits up, and then divide by 3 find the remainder when they divide it by 3. So that's what they're doing here. Okay, uh, this is actually not how the XOR operator works, but they redefined it as a ternary XOR like this, okay? All right, your task is to find numbers A and B, ternary numbers A and B of both length N, both without leading zeros, that A ternary X or B is going to equal to X, and max a b is the minimum as possible so they basically want you to minimize the the max of a b so that basically means that a b has to be about the same the magnitude has to be around the same okay uh, and you want to minimize that so you want to minimize that all right so you have the first line of input contains test cases and then the rest contains just ternary number x considers of n digits 0 1 and 2 and yeah it's guaranteed that sum of n does not exceed 5 times 10 to the 4th. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. So, to do this problem, you actually have to do you have to do it by hand. So, I'm going to show you guys how how I came up with the solution. I got I got an A C, which means if I had skipped the second problem, I probably would have solved this pre question and I probably would have scored way higher than I did on the uh, contest. So, without further ado, I'll tell you guys uh, what what you see in the pattern. It basically compare the inputs and then the outputs and then you will see the pattern. Let's look at the first input statement, two, 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 two. And then they split the two, 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 two into this A and B and we see that all the values are all ones. Okay, so it splits the two, 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 two into one, 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 okay. So from the first input statement, I could probably guess that if I see a two, I could probably split into one, one. Okay, just from looking at the first input statement. And okay, maybe that's right. I don't know. Okay, let's look at it. Let's assume it is, okay? Let's look at the second input statement. Okay, so I have a 2, and they split the first digit 2 into 1, 1. Okay, that seems exactly like our first, uh, what we assume it was, which is to split the 2 into 1, 1. I see a 1, and they split into 1, 0. Okay, so... That means that if I want to have uh, two numbers where it's the, the minimum of max A and B, right? One of them has to be larger than the other, but I want both of them to be as smallest as possible, if that makes sense, right? Yeah, okay, so that's because I want to minimize A and B, but I want the... Like, I know one of them is going to be larger than the other one, and I want to minimize both of the two numbers, okay? So that's what I want to do. So this one, this one became one zero, right? So that means I know the top one is going to be larger than the bottom one. So I know A is going to be larger than B, just I'm seeing at this. So if I see a one, maybe I'll split it as one zero, okay? I'll set the first I have two strings, I set the first one to have one and the second one to have zero. Okay, maybe that will do. Okay, that seems reasonable. Okay, I see a two again, but instead of splitting one, one, I see zero and two. So there must be either, there must be a certain condition that caused me to split the two to become zero and two instead of one, one in the above in the above, because we, we saw that in the above, we they split into one one e evenly. So it might have to do with uh, evens or something, I don't know. So that's what, we, that's what we have to think about. We have to think about this, okay? We have to think about this. Okay, then I see a one, and it's split between zero and one. Okay, that makes sense. That's exactly what we assumed that we got from the, the, for the first number one. But 
the instead of putting one on the top and zero on the bottom, they put zero on the top and one on the bottom. Okay. Well, what, what does that tell me? Well, I know that the first A is going to be larger than B, right? Because they put a one on the top and then zero on the bottom for the second digit, right? So I know that what they're doing is they're making A a larger value than B, okay? And then they put, instead of putting the larger digit of splitting the one into zero and one, they put the smaller digit of zero on the above, on the larger number. That's what they're doing, okay? So instead of putting the, the one, like the large digit of one, at the larger num in the larger number, let's see in A. Instead of putting the larger digit one in A, they put the smaller digit. They put the zero in A, and they put the larger number in the smaller number B. Right? I hope we. Okay, I'm gonna reiterate that. It's the same thing. Okay. We saw from the second digit that they put the large, large digit one in A and the small digit zero in B. Okay. When we saw one, they split it between one and zero. Okay. So what they're doing is they're setting this, they're making sure A is a larger number and B as a smaller number based on the, the places that they put, right? From adding, like, you know, comparing the, the, the values of ones and zeros. So they, they, they set A as a larger number and then B as a smaller number. So when they saw the one again, instead of putting the zero in the larger number, they, uh, instead of putting the zero in the smaller number, they put zero and the larger number, okay? So I'm so from this statement, I know that a certain condition happened and they're gonna put, to balance out the, the values of these two strings to prevent one to being super duper large and the other being super duper small, what they did was they put the larger digit, uh, the, the smaller digit in the larger value and the, the larger digit in the smaller value. Okay, if, 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 if that me makes any sense to you guys, I hope that makes any sense. Okay, so that's what they did here. They did that the same, the same thing for the next one. And the next one, instead of putting the larger digit in A, they put zero in A again. Okay, so they, they, they put the smaller digit, they put zero in A and put one in B. That's what they did. They put zero in A and they put one in B. So they're not maximizing a. We know they're not maximizing A. Otherwise, they would put all the, the ones into A, right? They would put the zeros into B. So we're not maximizing the, this is the A as the largest as possible, okay? We're going to put, so what they're doing is we're going to make sure that we're balancing these two values of A's and B's to make sure that when I do a minimum of uh, the uh, the minimum as possible of max A and B, that'll be the minimum as possible, okay? So that's what they're doing. And they're making sure that these values are balanced, okay? Okay, so that, that's what we got from the second input string. Okay, the third input string, they put two. What does that tell us? Well, they split two into one and one, so that's exactly, exactly what we guessed in the first input statement. Whenever we see a two, we're gonna split to one and one, all right? Except in this case, in the second input statement, we saw that the, uh, for a certain condition, this two be split between zero and two. Okay, so only in the second condition that this 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 anomaly happened. Okay, so we're gonna ignore that for now, but we are going to come back to it later on as we develop more of a pattern. Okay, all right. In the third, uh, in the fourth, the last test case. Okay. We saw a two, and they split it between one and one. Okay, that makes sense. That's exactly what what we saw in the other two statements, okay? And then they saw a two, and they split it between one and one again. Okay, that makes sense, makes sense. Okay, we see a zero, and they split between zero and zero. Okay? So if I see a zero, I'm gonna split it between zero and zero. So that, that's what we know now. Okay, so what we know, is, I'm gonna put a note. This is what we know. If C2 split 1, 1, split A to equal 1, B to equal to 1. 
if C0 split A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, okay? So digit, when I say A equal to zero, B equals zero, A equals one, B equal one, this is like adding the digit, right? I'm saying like, this is just like notes. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, let's look at the next digit. Two, two becomes one, one again. Okay, that makes sense. Two becomes one, uh, the next one is two. Two becomes one, one, okay. Two becomes one, one. Zero becomes zero, zero, okay. Two becomes one, one. And then one becomes one, zero. Okay, well, this seems exactly what we saw already. So um, this like further, further solidifies what we saw. So we saw that one splits between one and zero. So if C1 split one and split to one and zero, except if, um, except uh, later on, we put, we switch it to zero and one, except if, if, uh, uh, on the second condition, uh, where we except if condition, whatever condition that happened in the second one, we are going to put put uh, zero and one instead. Okay. So let's look back. Let's we have to look back at the second because this this is the second input statement that is an anomaly to us that is causing some strange things to happen. Okay. So. Let's look back at it again. Okay, if we see a one and a zero, they put one and zero. Okay, so they have a larger number and they put one and zero. Then later on, there's a two here for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, but that that's just how it is. Then they they put, uh, let's see, zero one. For one, they they put zero one, but d differently differently. They put zero one differently. So they put zero into the larger value and one into the smaller value. That's what they did. So what our condition is, is, is um, right here. Split into one zero, except if already occurred, occurred, put zero in larger value, one put one in smaller value okay so let's let's look back at it again okay there must be a certain pattern that is occurring why did they put two here zero and two why did they put zero and two here that, that's the big issue why would they put zero and two here and then why would they put zero and one here and why would they put zero and one here again? Wait a minute. What do we see here? We see that in A, everything afterwards is our zeros. And everything for B, the smaller value, everything afterwards is two, one, one. Wait a minute. Two, one, one is exactly the same digits as this. So can we say that if we hit a one, zero, we put zeros in all of the values of the larger value and then put the rest of the digits in the smaller value. So that's what we're gonna say here. See, um, I'm not actually gonna put, so I'm gonna change this if C1 split one zero zero. Uh, so I'm gonna change this, okay? We're gonna change this and say, Sorry guys, if you already wrote this down. Every time you see patterns, it could change. All right, so if you see a one in your digit here, put one zero, put a digit one in a larger value, digit one in larger, and rest zeros. Then put rest of digits, from input into the other string. Okay, so that's basically how you would do this problem. 
we are now going to go to the computer and then code this up. We're not gonna use my code. Uh, my code was just really long. So I'm actually gonna follow the editorials code because their code is like really short and it's really efficient. So yeah, <laughs> um, let's, let's use the editorials code, okay? So right here, what I did was I created a, the input statement t, t, which is the number of test cases. And then I had, had a string S and then a number N, okay? And this is N is the length of the string. So I read an N and S and uh, I did while T minus minus and I read at each test case, which is uh, N and S from the uh, input statement right here, okay? From these, okay? So what am I gonna do first? I'm going to loop from zero to the end, okay? So I'm gonna loop from zero to the end Okay, uh, and then what am I gonna do? If if my string at i is equal to uh, let's look at our city. Um, let's look at let's look at let's look, let's look at uh, the test case one. Okay, if we see a one, then we have to put one in the larger, and then z and then uh, the rest of zeros, and then put the rest of the digits from the input into the other string. So what if we see a one, what am I going to do? Okay. Um, okay. First of all, what am I going to do? Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Okay. Well, I need a large value, right? I need a large string and a small string. So I'm going to create string large and then string small. And I'm gonna fill these up with uh, values from the our input statement. So large is gonna have large is gonna have two let's just fill it up with like a okay. I'm gonna fill large with uh, a bunch of A's and then small with a bunch of A's also. Okay, this is just like uh, what, what what's the problem here? Missing close parentheses. What? Yeah. Something's not right. Uh. Wait wait wait. wait what is what is wrong? Something wrong. Here. Smaller, larger. Yeah. Okay. And then what am I gonna do? Um, actually, I'm not gonna put it A's, I'm gonna put zeros. This is just like the beginning of, uh, so I'm gonna create two strings and I'm gonna put zeros. Uh, the reason why, cause like zero is zero and then we don't have to deal with anything with zeros. Uh, cause you have to, there's zeros anyway in the string. So this is good for as a placeholder, all right? You can put anything. All right, so if we put, if we see a one, we're gonna put digit one in the larger number. So larger at i is going to equal to one, okay? And then the rest are gonna be zeros, so I'm gonna loop from, <clears throat> what is my current index? My current index is i, so I'm gonna loop from i plus one to the end and then set the rest as zeros. Then I also have to set the rest of the digits from the input into the other string. So I'm gonna do a for int, uh, let's say j is equal to i plus one, j is less than n, j plus plus. So I'm gonna loop from here, this is the rest. Uh, I'm gonna put zeros in the rest of, the, of larger, so larger is at i is gonna be zero. Actually, technically we don't have to put zeros in larger because it's already zero so we don't have to put that so i'm not going to put larger that because uh, we already initialized larger to have all zeros so let's just leave it at that as it is and then we just have to put the rest of the digits from the input into the other string so the other string is smaller so i'm going to do j is going to equal to s at i okay so smaller at j is the smaller uh, string 
of the smaller string, right? And I'm gonna set each digit to be the same digit as our input string at i. Okay? Or, no, not i. It's not i, it's j. Whoops, sorry, at j, okay? Smaller is gonna have the same values as the input string, okay? Okay, now we have to think about another thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, and then we should break, cause then we don't need to do this again. Yeah, we don't have to do this again after we see a one. We could just set it and then just be done with it, okay? Um, Let's see. Hold up. Um, otherwise, let's do this. We have to set. Let's look at the editorial code. Um, Okay, so else, what they did in their code was do uh, larger at i. They're gonna set all of them to zero, right? So what they did in the editorial is what, so if we see a two, so okay, so Remember, there's three cases, right? If we see a two, we split it to have one, one. If we see a zero, we split it to have zero, zero. And then uh, if you see a one, we put, we did all, all, we did, we already did what we did, right? We already did the case of uh, if we see a one. So what the editorial did for the, in case of a zero, is that instead of checking to have two more if statements of checking, if we, uh, if we see a two, we split to one, one. If we see a zero, we split to zero, zero. What they're going to do is they're going to set both of these values to have the value 0 plus um, input string at i minus 0. So they're going to convert the input string, our input string, into its corresponding number form. And they're going to divide by 2. So, what does this do? Uh, hold up. Yeah, I forgot a parenthesis. Okay, so how does this how does this accomplish what we do? So in, instead of doing two if statements, let's look at it. Um, if we see a two, right, we're gonna split into one one. So what they're gonna do is they're going to so how assignment works is actually uh, left to right. So we evaluate the right side first and then we assign left to the right's value. So let's evaluate the right side first. If we see a, so let's say we see a two, right? And then our answer is supposed to be split it to one and one. So what happens is if we see a two, we're gonna convert two into its corresponding number, which is two, right? If you subtract, uh, if you subtract zero, the character zero, you convert the character two to become the actual value two. And then we're gonna divide by two. So that will be the, have a value one. And then we're gonna add one with our character zero. And then that'll set larger and smaller to have one. One, one, one and one, right? Because we set smaller to have value one. And then larger is gonna equal to smaller, which is the same value one. Now let's see what happens if we, uh, if we put zero, if we see a zero. Well, if we put if we see a zero, then we're, we're going to convert the corresponding zero into its corresponding uh, number character, right? ASCII value, and uh, we convert the character zero to its corresponding number value, and zero divided by two is zero, and then so zero plus the core, uh, character zero is still going to be zero, right? So then 
smaller is still going to equal zero and larger is going to equal zero. So this this is actually a cool trick that you could use to prevent prevent uh, using two more if statements in this case. They use a trick of uh, computing it numerically so they don't you don't have to put two more if statements. But yeah, this basically accomplishes it because if you see a two, it becomes one one, and if you see a zero, it becomes zero and zero. Smaller at uh, larger and smaller become both at zero zero. So yeah, that's how you, this code works. Uh, then after that, what we're going to do is we are going to print larger and smaller. Uh, and L smaller. Okay. Oh, whoops. My fault, guys. I'm keep making mistakes. It's actually like this. That's actually, this is how you're supposed to initialize. Whoops, whoopsie daisies. Yeah, it wasn't the parentheses issue. That, that was just how you're supposed to initialize. You're supposed to put, um, you're supposed to put size and then the character you're initializing for a string. So if I, I'm supposed to put size n and then all the characters that I'm initializing. It's not the other way around. Okay, yeah, now it got accepted, okay. Yeah, so that's how you do this problem. Uh, I hope I explained it correct with you guys. Now I have to edit this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.